2023 was a bumper year for us in that we had a lot of shows in production, but the shows that we had in production in 2023 were obviously commissioned earlier than that. They were commissioned in 2022. I think what we're looking at now in 2024 is we're really beginning to feel the pinch of the strikes. I think that the damage that the industry sustained during the pandemic which was temporarily sort of healed, if you like. And, and we had an immediate boom time as soon as the pandemic finished. And then we went into two strikes. I feel that there is a lot of caution from broadcasters in taking on new stuff, in part because they are working out what are the things they put on hold they're still gonna be paying for, um, how many of those are actually gonna go forward. My sense is that there won't be a huge amount of new stuff going into production in 2024. The biggest change is going to be on budgets. And the thing I keep hearing again and again is, okay, we like it, but can you do it for less? And obviously there's always been a bit of that in our industry. You, you never go in and someone goes, we really like it, can you make it for more? You know, that is never gonna happen. But I do think that there is a huge tightening of belt over budgets. Whilst Netflix are certainly reducing the amount of stuff they do, the thing that they constantly talk about looking for are things which can be done on smaller budgets. Let's go big or go home. I love a book adaptation. It's no secret that Bad Wolf has built itself on two great trilogies with the discovery of witches and his dark materials. And now we're just embarking on The Winter King. It's time for something new. Which is an adaptation of Bernard Cornwell's The Warlord Chronicles, which is a trilogy. And there is something very satisfying to be able to take those big pieces of IP where some wonderful novelist has worked out what would take you kind of six years in a writer's room um, to work out if you were doing it as an original piece. And I love doing that. And we will continue to look to balance Bad Wolf's development and production portfolio with a mix of things which are adaptations and um, often quite big budget because if you are adapting a book, you can't decide, okay, well, no one's going to go to the North or no one will go to battle or no one will go to the ball or whatever it might be. Whereas if you're doing an original piece, you can balance your production budget. I'm not interested in people who comment on the direction of the wind. I'd much prefer if you could make it blow. We are looking to balance out some of the higher end pieces of drama we do with some smaller, more local pieces. Doesn't mean to say they won't still have international and global appeal, but they will perhaps be made not in deep period or not in a world which is like but unlike our own, but perhaps in a world which is entirely ours and is most definitely in Wales and tell pieces that can be as much fun and heightened as some of the others, but in a more containable way. In the grand tapestry of fate, I'm less of a golden thread and more of a not. AI's got to be an opportunity, but I think it's like any opportunity, it's got to be used in the right way. I'm not remotely interested in an AI's writing capacity, and I'm not remotely interested in AI's replacing our great actors in some way, but I am interested in it in a tool that perhaps will help us develop better visual effects, or in the case of Dope Girls, for example, we are using a lot of volume stage work to recreate Trafalgar Square, and AI can be very useful in terms of helping us develop some of the images for that. Worldwide premiere. When Russell T. Davis said he would go back to Doctor Who, he put down certain things. One was he wanted to be able to make it on a budget level, which at least had some chance of competing with other huge franchise shows in that area. He wanted the brackets taken off it internationally. He felt that there was a massive load of Doctor Who viewers who had not yet been exposed to Doctor Who and that he wanted to find a way of doing that. And he wanted Julie Gardner and myself, Bad Wolf, to make the show with him. So BBC and BBC Studios came to us and said, all right, you know, would you make this show with us? Could you help us find an international partner 
for the show that would do all the things that Russell was asking for. And so we work closely with the BBC and BBC Studios to talk to various possible partners, of which Disney Plus was absolutely standout. Russell's vision was to come back not just to make Doctor Who the television show, but to actually develop the Hooniverse. Russell uh, had the idea of bringing David Tennant, who played the 10th Doctor, back as the 14th Doctor. He has a whole storyline as to why the 14th Doctor came back and therefore why we have the 15th Doctor, which is Shuta Gatwa. What? What? No way. Shuta Gatwa is, as far as the Disney Plus audience is concerned, that is, that's their like, okay, season one. So it's been a complicated thing in celebrating and loving the whole history and legacy of Doctor Who, while at the same time Russell developed the Hooniverse to ensure that you could be someone who's not really even heard of it, or maybe you've heard of it and thought it wasn't for you, but what were all the things that audience would need alongside of just the new television series that we're making to really give them an immersive and deep understanding of Doctor Who. So Russell was insistent that we develop the back catalogue that the BBC put all of that into one place. So it would be available if people watch for the first time and they think that's interesting. So this show is the longest running sci-fi show in the world. And then they can go into the back catalogue and see what the canon is, see how the show has developed. Nice to see you again. I think 2024 is potentially gonna be quite tough. I think it's gonna be a transition year. I think it's that transitional period between, as I've spoken about, the kind of boom of production life with all the streamers coming in and that almost false boom that we had in production post the pandemic. There will be a change coming, won't be forever, but I think there will be a change in the co-production market. The only way to deal with change is to embrace it. I think we have to look for the positive in change whether we feel positively about it or not. I think as the world faces uncertainty, we've got you know, elections coming up on both sides of the Atlantic. It makes people more cautious sometimes about the type of material they want to work on. I think it potentially will make the Americans look to really only want to do American material, and the Brits therefore only do British-based material uh, because that's all they can afford. So I think it will bring 2024 will be a transitional period as we begin to change into what our new television normal looks like.